Hi everyone and welcome to the QuickBooks Enterprise Manufacturing Demonstration. My name is Rianne Salter with Minding My Books. I've been working with QuickBooks software for over 20 years. I've helped over hundreds of businesses implement QuickBooks Enterprise. I specialize in finding out what specific needs you require for your business and if QuickBooks Enterprise is a good fit. If it is a good fit, we then work with you, your staff, and accountant during the implementation process. Also, since I'm an Intuit reseller, I'm able to save you more money than if you purchase directly from Intuit's telesales or online through their website. Here's what we would like to cover with you today. First, we'll go through the item setup. Then, we'll go through assembly setup. And then we'll go through the typical manufacturing process. This includes taking an order, ordering raw material, building the inventory assembly, and then fulfilling the order for that assembly. Now let's go ahead and get started. We'll start with the item setup on the items list. The items list is where you keep all your raw material and inventory assemblies. In the enterprise software, you can have up to 1 million items on your items list versus 14,500 in Pro and Premier. To create a new item, we'll choose item on the bottom of the screen, we'll choose new. You can create service items, you would use service items for labor, and if you're going to use service items in the manufacturing process, you will need to check this box. This will allow you to enter a cost of the item along with an expense account. Inventory parts are raw materials that you can go into making an inventory assembly. Inventory assemblies are manufactured goods. You can create non-inventory parts. These are items that you don't track a quantity for, but if you want to use them in assemblies, you do need to check the box that says this item is used in assemblies. You can then create a cost and the expense account. You can create an other charge account for things like delivery charges or setup fees. And again, if you need to use the item in assemblies, you will need to check the box to dictate a cost and associate an expense account. Then you can also create subtotal, group, discount items, along with payment items, sales tax items, and sales tax groups. So here's an inventory part that is set up. It's a front bullet light. I've entered description, purchases, and sales. I've entered cost. I've entered my sales price. You'll notice that it's calculated my margin and markup. And I've entered a minimum reorder point and a maximum reorder point for this item. This is my inventory assembly. This is my bicycle. And this is my bill of material. I can expand my view of that bill of material. And this lists everything that goes into making this inventory assembly. It does show you the total bill of material cost. And it's calculating my markup and margin based on the sales price. And my total bill of material cost. I'm going to go through the process now of creating a new item. We'll choose item, new, and this is going to be a non-inventory part. The item name will be Grease. I want to use this item in inventory assemblies, so I want to check this box. and I buy this item in different units of measure. I buy it in volume and I buy it by the barrel. I'm going to use it by the fluid ounce, so this is set up correctly. The cost is 10 cents per fluid ounce. I will choose the expense account, repairs and maintenance, and I will choose sales for the income account. 
I'm not going to choose a sales price because this is an item I'm not going to sell. I'm just going to use it in inventory assemblies. So we'll click OK to save. And now I'm going to add this item and use it in my assembly. So to add it to my bicycle, go into Edit Full View, scroll to the bottom, and enter Grease. We will use one fluid ounce in the bicycle assembly. But I also want to add this to my sub-assemblies. My front wheel kit and my rear wheel kit. So from this screen, I can edit this existing item. We'll add grease at a half an ounce. And we'll edit our rear wheel kit. And we will add grease to that as well at a half an ounce. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then after that is completed, we will click OK to save. This will allow me to show you something that's unique in QuickBooks Enterprise. Brand new from version 14, they added the Where Used in Assemblies. The Where Used feature will show me everywhere I've used a particular item. I've used this grease item in my bicycle assembly item and my front and rear wheel kit. If I needed to replace this in an instant where an old part has been replaced by a new part or if you have a new part from another vendor, this will allow you to easily see where this part is used in assemblies and automatically replace it. Something that is unique to QuickBooks Enterprise and the items list are custom fields. In QuickBooks Enterprise, we allow you to add up to 15 custom fields to greater define your items. These fields can be used on sales forms and purchase forms. You can also run reports on them. And as I said, you can add up to 15 custom fields and you can dictate what can be inputted into that field, including the ability to create a multi-choice list. You can also require the use of the field on either the transactions or the list. And we'll go to the home screen. Something else that is unique in QuickBooks Enterprise is the ability to add the Advanced Inventory module. Advanced Inventory gives you the ability to track inventory in multiple locations. You can also track inventory in rows, shelves, and bins. You can track serial numbers or lot numbers right in QuickBooks. You can use FIFO costing versus average cost. And it gives you the ability to assign a barcode for items so you can easily scan them onto purchase transactions and sales transactions. And click OK and we'll go back to the home screen. We include an inventory center. The inventory center gives you a list of all your inventory parts and unique to QuickBooks Enterprise is the ability to attach an image to your inventory part. It allows you to see your markup and your margin. You can edit your inventory parts from the screen and you can run common inventory reports. With the advanced inventory feature turned on, you'll also see a selection for inventory sites. This will allow you to narrow the inventory center to a specific inventory location. There is a separate video for advanced inventory. Please look in the resource center to get the link to watch the advanced inventory demo.
Let's go back to the items list. We'll show you a few things that are unique to inventory assemblies for QuickBooks Enterprise. First, in QuickBooks Enterprise, you can have up to 500 items in your assembly versus 100 in our Premier software. Let's go ahead and go back to the home screen. Now that we have reviewed item setup, let's go through the typical order from manufacture to delivery process. We'll start at the sales order, and this is where we'll take the order from our customer. Let's add the item with a quantity of one. This is the warning I get telling me I don't have any bicycles on hand in order to fulfill this order. This icon on the order is the available to promise. This shows me any quantity on hand, quantity on sales orders, any items I have reserved for assemblies, and then it calculates the quantity available. It will also show me the quantity on hand for any pending builds. All right, now we'll save and close the sales order. This is what your module would look like with the Advanced Inventory Module add-on. I have a Site field. I have a Bin field, which shows my default bin. And if I were tracking serial numbers, I could choose a serial number of a bicycle I had in stock. In this case, I have to build the bicycle so I have no numbers in stock. We will also have an optional pricing module. The pricing module allows you to dictate the price based on a number of criteria. The criteria would be selected automatically or allow you to choose. And I've done here to dictate custom pricing for different items for customers of base pricing on a number of different categories. There's also a separate advanced pricing module and click the resource center to get the link to watch the advanced pricing demo. So now we've entered our sales order. So let's take a look at an inventory stock status by item report. This report will list my items on the left hand side then the preferred vendor. I've entered a minimum reorder point and a maximum reorder point for all my items. It shows me my on-hand quantity and quantity I have on sales orders, any quantities I have reserved for assemblies. Then it will calculate my available quantity. This check mark means I need to order these items. In inventory assemblies, you'll find on the bottom of that inventory stock status by item report. And this is telling me that I have a bicycle on sales order and have a negative one available because of that one on sales order. Next, we're going to build or attempt to build that inventory item. To do that, we go to Inventory Activities, then we'll go to Build Assembly. We'll choose a bicycle and we'll tell that system to build one bicycle. I will tab out of that field and the system will tell me that I don't have enough inventory on hand to build that assembly. So I need to make it pending. So I will click on the make pending button. That will put the pending stamp on the assembly and then I'll build and close. Now we'll go back and take a look at our inventory by stock status by item report. Now we have a quantity showing in the For Assemblies column. This says that the system now knows I need to order the inventory in order to build the assemblies. Now from this screen, I can create sales orders. First, I'm going to choose this box that says Use Available Quantity to Reorder. 
What that will do is take the maximum amount and any amount that we have on sales orders plus any amount that I have for assemblies and calculate that quantity I need to reorder. From the screen, I can click on the Create Auto POs button. This will list all the inventory that I need to reorder. I'm going to click on the Select All button. Notice that I have two separate vendors, so the system is going to create two separate purchase orders. I've checked the box that says to show purchase orders after saving. I'll click on the Create PO button, and once you refresh our Inventory Stock Status by Item report, and now it shows I have a quantity on PO, and I no longer need to order that inventory. If I scroll down to the bottom of the report, it says that I need to build my inventory items. We'll close this Inventory Stock Status by Item report, and the system will automatically show the Open Purchase Orders report. Now from here, I can double click and that will bring up the purchase order on the screen. I can either print this and send to my vendor or email it directly to my vendor. We'll assume that I've sent both purchase orders to the vendors. Now let's go ahead and close this report. Now we'll receive our purchase orders. To receive against the purchase orders, we'll choose Receive Inventory with Bill. We'll choose our vendor, and the system will recognize that we have open purchase orders. We'll click Yes that we want to receive against it. Then choose the purchase order, and the system will automatically fill in the items on that purchase order. If you didn't receive all of the inventory items, that's okay. You can change the item quantity to the actual amount that you received. We'll save and close. And when you do receive the rest of the shipment, just go back to the receive items in inventory. We'll choose a vendor, then system will keep that purchase order open and receive the remaining quantity. So we'll save and close that. Now we'll go back and receive the inventory from our other vendor. So as you can see, we choose the other vendor. We choose the PO. And then we go ahead and save and close. If we're using the Advanced Inventory feature and I want to receive that inventory, I would choose my vendor. I'll say yes, I'm receiving against my PO. I can check this box that says I'm scanning inventory items. Choose the PO and then close. QuickBooks then will give you the quantity received. Now I can use the barcode scanner to receive inventory. As you scan items, QuickBooks will count the items you receive as you scan the item and then compare them to the quantity you have on your sales order. If you have a serial number item, you can add that number at the time along with the site and the bin that you're going to place them in. Again, there is a separate video that shows advanced inventory. Ask me for a link to watch the video. And now we'll end up going back to the home screen. So now that we have received the inventory, we can now go finalize our build to finish our bicycle. To find the build, we're going to go to Reports, Inventory, then go to Pending Builds Report. This report shows our bicycle and our rear and front wheel kits. We'll double click on the bicycle. And now that we have sufficient quantity on hand, we can click on the button that says Remove Pending Status. A couple of things that are unique to QuickBooks Enterprise around the build screen is first, QuickBooks Enterprise will allow you to substitute items on the fly. That means if I need to replace the item with a different part, I can easily do that on the build screen. In our Premiere software, 
you would need to go to the items list and edit the original assembly item. You can also go and edit the quantity needed. If this bicycle needed two threadless headsets, I would change this to two right on the screen. Then the cost of two threadless headsets would be added to the bill of material cost to this assembled item. QuickBooks Enterprise will also allow you to customize this build screen, so if you need to add any sort of custom fields to the top of the form, you can do that. QuickBooks Enterprise will then allow you to print the screen, so if you needed to use this as your shop or traveler or your work order, you can print this build order screen and give it to the person who needs to assemble this bicycle, so they can then pull the parts to build the bicycle. If you're using advanced inventory, you would also have a serial number on the build screen where you can assign the serial number to a raw material going into your finished good. You can assign a serial number to your finished good. You would choose the site and the bin the raw material is coming from. You would choose the site and bin of the assembled good and you can print an assorted pick list. That would sort the pick list by location to make picking through the warehouse that much easier. So now that we've removed the pending status, we can go ahead and build and close this inventory assembly. When we build and close, this will reduce the inventory asset of my raw material and increase the quantity and value of my finished good. So we'll click build and close then select yes, I want to record my changes. This is taking care of my bicycle and rear and front tires. Now that we have built the bicycle, we have had enough quantity to fulfill my order. To fulfill the order, we can do a couple of different ways. I could run an open sales order by item report. This will show me any items I have on back order. From this report, I can double click and bring up that sales order on the screen. Then click on the Create Invoice button. Or I could go to the customers and click on the Sales Order Fulfillment Worksheet and the sales order fulfillment worksheet will show you the orders you need to fill. The top part will give you the summary. The bottom part will give you the detail of the sales order. From here, I can print pick lists and package slips. That would be just for the bicycle, not for the individual components that go into the bicycle. I could double click to bring up the item on the sales order. Here you can add a couple of things to the sales order. Now we will add the helmet and we're going to add a pump. Then from here we will click on the create invoice button. I'll say yes, I want to save my changes and the system will ask if I want to create the invoice for all of the items on the sales order or create for just to select items. I'm going to choose just for selected items to show you the option and when I choose that it gives me a list of items that were on the sales order. If I needed to change the quantity I can do that and then I will go ahead and click OK. And here is my invoice. From my invoice we do have shipping options. We have FedEx, UPS, USPS so we can ship directly from the invoice. Once I click on Save and Close, this will reduce my quantity of bicycle, helmet, and pump. This concludes our manufacturing demonstration. We offer a complimentary consultation and the best discount pricing available for your business. And remember, we meet and always usually beat pricing than if you purchase direct through Intuit online or telesales. Also, 
If you're currently using QuickBooks Enterprise, we can run a cost comparison to see if we can get better pricing than what you're currently paying. Please call me or email me at rayann.salter at mindingmybooks.com. Please subscribe and click the bell to be notified of new videos for QuickBooks products. Thank you for watching my video.